Hi, this video is for the upcoming fight between um, Tyson Fury and Martin Rogan over in Belfast. Um, it looks quite a good fight on paper, but it really isn't. Um, Martin Rogan hasn't fought um, anyone decent really since his two fights with Sam Sexton, which were in 2009, so we're going back about three years. Uh, his last two wins were against pretty, um, you know, meagre opposition. Uh, I don't even know who they were. I think they were two journeymen. And that was about 18 months ago. So, uh, Rogan hasn't even fought for like 18 months. And he hasn't fought anyone, you know, on at least at domestic level for, you know, three years. So, I don't think Martin Rogan can win this. Um, but like I say, on paper it looks better than it actually is in re reality simply because, you know, Martin Rogan is known for, you know, his price fight win a few years back and his wins over, um, you know, Matt Skelton and Audley Harrison. But again, you know, we're going back nearly four years for them. So I can't see anything other than a Tyson Fury win, probably by stoppage, sort of mid to late round stoppage, um, something like round six. Um... And I know that Tyson Fury is going to get a lot of criticism because of the fact that um, this fight comes off of, um, you know, off um, since uh, Tyson Fury refused to fight David Price, um, or whether he refused, I don't know, but um, that fight didn't take place. But as I say to everybody, um, and as I said in my British boxing uh, video that I did a few weeks back, Great Britain is the only um, country in the world, the only boxing country in the world, where you will find boxers who have to fight their British mandatories or fans just slag them off endlessly. You won't find that in any other boxing country in the world. Not even in Mexico, not in America, only maybe Japan. And what I mean by that is where you have a scenario where you have two prospects, so in this case Tyson Fury and David Price, so two prospects who have had under, say, 15 fights, something like that, and who are forced to fight each other because of, for example, um, one of them is the mandatory for a title. So in this case, Tyson Fury was the British champion and he had to vacate or fight David Price. In no other country would there be a, a title with as much prestige as the Lonsdale title where two boxers are forced to fight each other. In America, what exists in America to force two fighters to fight each other? Nothing, because nobody takes the NABF title seriously anymore, which is a shame, and nobody takes the USBA title seriously anymore, which is a shame as well. And they don't have a American title like we have a British title. In Japan, they have the Japanese title, which has got a lot of prestige so that's why I say that um, you know maybe Japan and that's it but Mexico they don't have it um, and what I mean by all of this is you'll never see an Evander Holyfield versus a, a Riddick Bowe after 15 fights it's always after 30 fights you'll never see an Evander Holyfield versus Mike Tyson after you know 10 fights or, or Bowe versus Tyson whatever these fights don't exist uh, this week I interviewed Joe Hanks, who's a you know a good um, pros heavyweight prospect in America, and you know I asked him this question. I said, you know, do you think fights with Seth Mitchell and you know Deontay Wilder, do you think they might be on the cards? And he said, well, you know, and he was perfectly honest, and he said, well, you know, I think like I'm aiming for bigger fights than that. I'm aiming for world title fights. You know, I'm aiming for you know, big money fights against big contenders and hopefully one day, you know, I'll get a title shot, a world title shot. And I said, and, you know, I didn't say this to him, but that's what I'm talking about. Why wouldn't Joe Hanks and Seth Mitchell fight in the next fight? Because they don't have to in America. There's, oh, and he also said that, um, you know, he said, why would I want to stop my fellow pros, my fellow American pros from you know, their own success, maybe we can meet further down the line. And that's what you get in America. What happens is two prospects go on their own paths, they go on their own paths to success, and they'll only meet back in the ring if one of them's successful and he's going to take the other guy's title. You'll never see them stopping each other's, uh, you know, venture. They all go their separate paths. And one of the reasons for that is the size of America, you know, 
a guy in New York is never going to bump into a guy in California on the street, whereas, you know, a Mancunian and a Liverpudlian in Britain might bump into each other in the street. And also there's Twitter and there's gym talk and this, that and the other. So a fight is much easier to be made in Britain because of, you know, the close proximity. But anyway, the point I was making is that um, people are going to slag off Tyson Fury for taking this fight, but at the end of the day, the guy's had, I think, 17 fights, and he's, what, 23 or 24? I mean, in what other country do you see a 23-year-old who's had 17 fights or whatever being forced to fight the second best heavyweight in the country? You wouldn't see it in America, you wouldn't see it in Mexico, you wouldn't see it in Puerto Rico, you wouldn't see it anywhere other than Britain. And I think that's unfair on British boxers, because I think as British fans, we're too... Oh, what's the word? We're too um, demanding. It's like, oh, if Tyson Fury doesn't fight David Price, then that's it. I'm finished with him. Whereas I would say, both guys have got massive futures. Both guys are young, you know, especially Fury, young for the heavyweight division. And both guys can go on to do big things. Let them go on to live a, to a European success and let them fight in the ring in two years' time when one of them's got some sort of title around his belt round his waist. Um, look at George Groves versus James DeGale as a perfect example of this. I mean, no way would you see Andre Durrell versus Andre Ward fight in America after 10 fights. That would be ridiculous. So, I don't like the Tyson Fury versus Martin Rogan fight, but I don't think he's dodging David Price, so to speak. I think it's just not in either guy's interest right now. I think it's in their interest to avoid each other and come back to the table in two years time something like that um so not a good fight but plenty of good fights after that for tyson fury he's got you know someone like marius uh, Wack or vak from poland something like that might be a good fight a rematch with derek chisora maybe in america that could be a good fight um fights against you know if guys like dimitrenko and povetkin and all that actually bother fighting someone with a pulse, that might be good. So he's got plenty of fights after the Rogan fight. Um, like I said, I can't see anything other than a Tyson Fury victory. Thanks for watching.